get back to radiology because I want to find out what interventional radiology does for us girls. With us today is Dr. Matthew Dicker, Prescott radiologist. Great to have you with us. Thanks, Sandy. Now, you're also with vascular and interventional specialists of Prescott. Yes, um, vascular and inter interventional specialists of Prescott is part of Prescott radiologists. We at vascular and interventional specialists of Prescott are interventional radiologists. Interventional radiologists are board certified diagnostic radiologists, but we do minimally invasive procedures using the images that radiologists have, ultrasound, CAT scan, x-ray, to perform these, these procedures with little risk and little pain and quick recovery time for patients. Now, you know, this is a, a kind of a new age thing in the sense that it used to be literally you had to cut open something if there were symptoms and then you have to like poke around and try and figure out what is going on. Exactly, exactly. In the past, um, yeah, like you say, incisions, surgeries, recovery time. Now we do procedures through small little catheters, just like this, little tubes that we can put in blood vessels and places in the body, um, all through a little nick in the skin. Okay, this is just so, it's, it's like a science fiction almost yeah. to me. It's now, uh, now is there a camera in this? How do you no. see what, what's happening to Yeah, that? what we do is we put these catheters in the body, usually in maybe a blood vessel, and we use x-rays and we can follow this catheter through the bloodstream um, and we look at it all on an x-ray screen. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, I see. So let's see if there's a blockage or something. This is going to come up against it. You're going to see it on the x-ray imaging on the exactly. Im and say, oh my gosh, there's our problem right there. Yeah, some of the procedures we classically do are angiograms and angioplasty. We put stents in and yeah, like you say, we put these catheters so like in the body. So like heart work. In the heart or, or any other blood vessel, we put this catheter where we want it to go and we can see it all on the x-ray to open up a blockage like you say. I can't imagine. I just think that is the coolest thing ever. Well, specifically, there are some things that women have uh, mostly and that that helps with too. Now, I know, for instance, uh, my mother has varicose veins and they're painful and they I think they can be dangerous as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, and we, we've talked about this before. Uh, varicose veins we can treat usually with a small catheter using a very minimally invasive procedure. We don't have to do the vein stripping um, like, like they have done in years past. Yeah. Um, so, you know, women get varicose veins more than men so it's, it's, a, it's a big women's health issue and that is something we at Vascular Interventional Specialist of Prescott can take care of for you. Wow. So you go down through each vein and, and sort of um, ablate it. Exactly, yeah. it's, it's okay. a vein ablation. We go into the vein that's not working very well and we remove that vein from the system so the blood can circulate uh, normally so uh, the varicose veins can shrink away. Because I guess other veins, do other veins kind of take over when you lose a vein? You're, or something, you're exactly doctor? right. The varicose veins are the veins we see on the surface. There are deeper veins that take over oh. for the circulation when those varicose veins are eliminated. They're like healthy and not painful and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And then there's also fibroids and things that you can help with. Absolutely. Uterine fibroids is a, is a massive health issue for women. Uh, uterine fibroids are in the, the uterine uh, tissue. They can cause pain. They can cause bleeding. And they can be very debilitating. What we as interventional radiologists can do is we can use a catheter just like this, go through the bloodstream, we can find the blood vessel that supplies that fibroid. And if we can block off that blood vessel that supplies that fibroid, that fibroid will shrink and decrease the pain that can be caused, the bleeding that can be caused. Classically, fibroids uh, were taken care of by just removing the uterus. Uh, that oh, doesn't like have a to hysterectomy be, kind yeah, of thing. Exactly, that doesn't wow. have to be done anymore. You avoid a surgery, you avoid uh, taking hormones, you avoid the recovery time from the surgery, uh, you avoid any pain. So these fibroids can now can be taken care of just through, again, well, through And sometimes that would inhibit the ability <laughs> to reproduce, I think, too, to have a child when you have these fibroid uh, problems. Absolutely, so, absolutely. So does it kind of help with that, too? Absolutely, with yeah. You, you can help with fertility, number one, and wow. if women still want to have kids and they don't want to have the hysterectomy, this is a great option. Okay, now this is something I've not heard about, but pelvic congestion. <laughs> that pelvic congestion a syndrome. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. You know, so you talk, you see varicose veins, which are big dilated veins you see, you know, in, in the legs. You can have big dilated veins inside the pelvis, and if those veins are dilated, blood is pooling in those veins. It can there can be congestion of the blood, and you can and women can have uh, pressure type symptoms and pain in your pelvis from these big dilated veins. Just like with varicose veins, we can go into those veins close off those veins that aren't working very well, those veins collapse, decrease the pressure and the pain from this pelvic congestion. So let's say that you had that. How would you know that it was the blood vessels and not just bursitis or something like that? Y you don't. There's a lot of things that can cause the pelvic pain and pressure. 
talk to your gynecologist, come see an interventional radiology specialist, and we can decide if the pain or pressure that you're having is due to pelvic congestion syndrome. And maybe do a little, you know, checking out the veins Absolutely. Thing. Put that <laughs> that's, catheter in there. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, and again, these are women's issues, and, and fallopian tubes, I know there's sometimes issues there. They have blockages. Again, I have a, a relative who had a, a pregnancy in the tube and stuff. I mean, absolutely, ow, absolutely. That's a problem. Yeah, part of the infertility workup is to figure out is there a blockage? Is there is there the, the passage of the egg from the ovary to the uterus? Is that blocked? And if so, we could potentially open that up and um, and relieve that that uh, infertility cause. I tell you, amazing. This has got to be much easier than some of the other, through the, the decades, through the centuries, I should say, things that were done to try to help women, you know, have children if they want, or just get away from pain absolutely, from the, these absolutely. different issues. So. And investigating these issues and treating these issues has become much easier. Ah, phenomenal. Now you have some other little tools here. I do. Tell me what these this, are. This is, is the tube we use to diagnose if somebody has a blockage in the fallopian tube. Oh. Um, we do a procedure called a hysterosalpingogram where we put this catheter right into the uterus. There's a little balloon on the end uh -huh. that can blow oh, up and, and hold it in place. Through this Amazing. catheter, we inject the x-ray dye, and it should fill the uterus. It should fill the fallopian tube. But if it doesn't fill that fallopian tube, oh, look at this. Yeah, show that. hold that up and yeah. do that again. That's where I go. Yeah. <laughs> the, the balloon on the end inflates to hold it in place. Okay, so and we, you put the dye in so you can see what's happening we can in see what's the fallopian happening. tube. Now, if there's a blockage in that fallopian tube, yeah. the next step is we can put a wire through that blockage. We can put a balloon in there, blow up that balloon, and it opens up that tube. And it goes right away. It flows right through. It should, yeah, sometimes there's debris in there, and we can just um, flush that debris right out. So the magic Dr. Matthew Dicker from Vascular and Interventional Specialist at Prescott and Prescott Radiologist, Fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. I tell you, it's amazing the things that you can do, and we're glad you're in our community. Dr. Matthew Dicker, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Sandy. Wow, I don't know. I tell you, I learned a lot with that one. <laughs>